Hey everybody, welcome to this month's video. My name is Dave Hedeman. I'm a senior sales engineer with Trimble. And this video is going to be about the renewed property set definitions with, for uh, IFC exports and Tecla Structures 2024. Now, if you're familiar at all with the older uh, property set dialog box for IFC exports, um, it wasn't always easy to understand. Let me go ahead and pull up an image here. So this is the um, older property set definitions dialog box on the right where you can see um, there is these check boxes for the different entity types and then there are some expandable tree menus for um, the different attributes you want to add and then it was just kind of hard to explain and hard for some people to understand so um, in 2024 this has all been renewed and we're going to be taking a look at that today. So in Tecla Structures 2024, the initial export IFC dialog box is going to look very similar. Here you can see we've got the output file name, the file format, uh, the type, and then the property sets and so on. If we go under the property sets, however, and we click on the edit button, this is going to open the new property set definitions dialog box. And one of the biggest things I think you'll notice right away, if you've got any experience with this, is the speed improvements. Um, the old dialog box sometimes took quite a while for it to open and load all of the different properties in it. So right off the bat, we're seeing a pretty quick um, access to these properties. Now to explain what we're looking at here, um, and there's, I'm going to include a link in the description down below to the actual help documentation, um, but just to give you an overview, at the top you've got a list of all of the different configuration files that are currently available, and you can of course create your own configuration files in addition to saving over the original ones. Um, down below we have the different property sets that are included in this configuration file, so the file is called Trimble XML in this case. The these are the different property sets or property groups, uh, if you want to think of them that way. And we've gone ahead in the out of the box and called them things like bolt properties and part properties and weld properties to help you understand what's in them. Now, under each one of these property sets down below are the actual properties in that group. So as an example, I have bolt properties currently selected. So down here we're seeing the available properties in that group. So we're seeing size and standard and length and name and so on. So if I were to come down here and instead click on the part properties property set, now we can see a list of the things that are included with the part properties like sequence and lot number and object type and assembly position. Okay, so it makes it a little bit easier to understand what's in each group. If I come down here and click on part user defined attributes, we're going to see a list of the UDAs that are currently included. Okay, so pretty simple to understand once you poke around here for a moment. But there's a couple of other neat new things that have been added here, such as the ability to include filters with the different property sets that did not exist in earlier versions. So right now, as an example, we have these part properties and over on the right, we can see that these are going to be affecting things like the beams and the columns. So those are the different uh, IFC element types. But that is a universal term. So that's for IFC beams of steel and also IFC beams of concrete. Well, maybe there's different properties that I want to include with steel versus concrete, right? So this filter column actually allows me to define filters to work with that specific property set group. And again, that's something we could never do before. So, to, and, and I'm not going to be digging too deeply into that, but if I just come over here and hit the modify button or the edit button, and we can see here there's there's the filter for this part properties. Right now it's empty. Um, we didn't include any in the out of box, but if you click on the edit button for that row, you'll see that it's a traditional filter dialog box. So if you know how to build selection filters or view filters or you know any other type of filter in Tecla, uh, it's the same exact format. So you could, in theory, build a filter to isolate rules for just what do I want to include with steel and what do I want to include with concrete and so on. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the other thing that I want to mention as far as what's new and not included before is access to all of your building smart standard IFC property. So if you click on this building smart icon here, you can see that there's going to be a list of all of the different standard IFC formats from building smart that you can import into your property sets and include with the data that you're being, uh, you know, sending out to Trimble connect or wherever you're sending this data to. Okay, so I want to just give a real quick run through on how to add 
a custom property set and include custom data with it. So one example that came to mind uh, based on a conversation I had recently and looking in the default property sets, you can see these are all individual sort of um, element uh, hierarchy objects. So a bolt or a part, but not an assembly group. Okay. And I had a conversation recently with a, uh, it was a fabricator that does their own erection and they were asking about how they can see that sort of data. They want to see assembly weight. They want to see assembly overall length and overall height and overall width. Okay. So this is how someone who wants that sort of data might want to add that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on the plus sign. By the way, you can see that some of these um, elements are not checked. So those will not be currently included, but I'm just going to go ahead and hit the plus sign over here and we're going to add a new one. So I'm going to call this new property set assembly properties. In the description, you can give it any sort of description you want. So I'm going to put um, information about overall assembly. And then again, we can create a filter, but I'm not going to worry about that today. And then what sort of object types in the IFC am I going to want to affect? What, where do I want this data to be seen? And right now we've already got stuff including, uh, included on the IFC beam or IFC column or the fastener. So what I'm going to do is scroll down here a bit and I'm going to look for the IFC element assembly. So that's going to be assembly level information that I'm trying to um, add properties to, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click add. So now I've got this new property set called assembly properties with information about the overall assembly. And then down here, um, I can start adding the individual properties that I want to see. So I'm going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to start adding things like the piece mark. That probably is pretty important. So I'm going to add assembly uh, POS. Now I can just start typing in information here. I can also select specific hierarchies of what I want. Maybe I'll do that. I'll just go ahead and select the assembly level information since that's what I want to focus on. And then I can come in here and search. I could just scroll down, but I'm going to type in P. O S and I can see there's the assembly position that I want to add. So I'll click add and now that's been added down below, but I'm not done yet. Okay. So I'm going to add here weight because that's something pretty important for an erector and also pretty important for a shop, you know, trying to plan uh, shipping this stuff. So again, I'll just come in here and start searching and there we can see the assembly weight. So I'll go ahead and add that information. Now here's something that um, I did a little bit of tinkering. And because I'm going to be sending this data to Trimble Connect, I'm not worried about changing the, con the conversion factor down here. Um, Trimble Connect has settings in it to automatically convert the units for weight and length. So I'm not going to bother changing this. Now, depending on the software you're sending it to, it may not have that option. So you can come in here and set things like kilograms or tons or pounds, okay? So you, you can set that, but I found better results with Trimble Connect with just leaving it as the default metric uh, export and then letting Trimble Connect give me the, the correct conversion. So I'm gonna go ahead and say add, and then we're gonna do like overall length. I'll search for length in here, do length gross, add. We'll do overall height, search for height, add, and we'll do overall width, and we'll stop there. So then we'll search for width. So um, this, these are just sort of, again, the properties that I was having a conversation um, with an erector or a fabricator erector about. And um, so pretty basic stuff, but the kind of information that was not included in the default property sets. So I'm done adding things. I'll close this. Now here I can either just save over the default Trimble XML, or I could go ahead and give this a custom name. I'll call this uh, Dave's custom settings or exports maybe. And we'll go ahead and save that file. Now that does initially get saved into the local model folder. Okay, so this is not saving to a system path or anything like that. You can then take that XML file and you can copy it into a firm or a project folder or your system folders if you wanted to. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll close this property set definition. And I'm just going to run a very simple export of something like this beam right here. So, um, don't need to export the entire model. We're just trying to prove a point here. So I'll go ahead and hit export. And then let's open up the model folder and go to, it's over on my other screen, of course. I'm just going to double click on the IFC file and let it open up in Trimble Connect here.
Okay, so here we've got the IFC file for that beam, and I have the Select Assemblies button pressed down here, so we're going to grab this beam assembly and pull up its properties. And over here on the right, you can see there's the assembly properties that I specifically chose to include. I'm including the assembly position, the weight, the overall length, overall height, and overall width. And again, my Trimble Connect is already set up for the units that I want. Um, so if you wanted to change you know, this out, maybe I wanted to do pounds instead, um, give it a second to refresh itself there. Now it's gone ahead and updated the weight. So you can uh, try the export settings to include the right conversion right away, but in Trimble Connect, I'm finding it easier in my tests to just leave it as the metric values and let Trimble Connect convert it. So in any case, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, this is a new feature in Techless Structures 2024, like I said, there to make it a little bit easier to customize this data, a little bit easier to understand what's going to be included, and also um, higher levels of control about what is being sent to what types of objects. So let us know what you think about this new development. Um, as always, appreciate you checking these videos out, and we'll see you next month. Thanks.